Welcome back, you beauties. Yes, let's talk a little movies with the guy who is plugged in. JP Sebastian is here to chat about some big ones. Yes. These are the heavy hitters. Yes. And these are some big franchises. Yes. And we are here for that. Uh -huh. Every one of these films anyway. is massive. Let's start with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And the reason I'm talking about these are, is because, uh, are you a popcorn half full or popcorn half empty type guy? A half full. We have a oh, half full sure. year yeah, coming yeah, yeah. up. This is the rest of the movies coming out for the rest of 2023. At the start of the year, I had the cinema old man. Cinema Almanac. Cinema Almanac. Telling the first six months, now we're going to the next six months. First up, like you said, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem specifically. August 11th in South Africa. So these are ones that stand out for me. I think this looks really cute, guys. Like, you've got a story where it's, well, firstly, it's voiced by teenagers. Aside from the fact that we, uh, one of the voices is a guy you just mentioned but during the break while we were just chatting to each other, Jackie Chan. Oh. Uh, voices Splinter, you've got Paul Rudd, you've got Seth Rogen. Uh, you've got really good names, but I really like that they all sort of step back and just let kids do the voices yeah, for a change. Yeah, for sure, man, because that's what these <laughs> kids are. And, and who it's for. Yeah, exactly. uh, so it looks adorable. I love the styling as well. Like yeah, after stuff like Spider-Man. Uh, Post in Boots as well, <laughs> The Last Wish. Uh, but definitely thank you, Spider-Man. Sort of animation is coming into this phase of going, wait, we can do what we want, and hopefully this does what it wants uh, on August 11th when it comes here to South Africa. I'm I'm super keen. Oh. Uh, I used to have a bebop and rocksteady pajamas. Oh, cool! That man. I would have tried to put on for you today, but it would have been explosive. Yeah, and look, I the voices it. that are going to be carrying those characters through for this generation, absolutely love that. I'm here for teenage you, you grew up turtles. In that? Yeah, man, I love this, and I love the fact that I've been able to introduce my son to it, and he loves the old, the original one as much as I do which is amazing to me. Uh, when it comes to cinemas, all of us are going there in our PJs. Guys. Yes, I'm down for that. Do we know when it's coming to cinemas? Uh, August 11th. August 11th, I'm here Can't for that. that on your eye. Um, strays. Um, another one that I feel <laughs> uh, hopeful for. Oh, that. No. that poster is despicably stupid. <laughs> Someone got those, paid. Those stars are despicably <laughs> stupid as well. They are two of the funniest. Look at Will Ferrell's grin. <laughs> oh, my word. And, Sold. And, oh, man, I hope Jamie Foxx is doing well, by the way. I haven't been keeping up with the news, but obviously, yeah, health issues and, jeez, one of the most talented living things that we have, even as a dog. Oh, yeah. Most talented dog, Jamie Foxx. Um, but, yeah, so, anyway, someone else told me send, about this. Send a lot of love and prayer um, in that direction. Strays yeah. is one of these movies that recently we had, I think there was one called Good Boys, where it was kids, similar to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, <laughs> but going R-rated. And at first, that can come off, obviously, cringy and corny and whatever, but this trailer gives me great promise that it's... Well, firstly, it's from the makers of Cocaine Bear. <laughs> Just still a name I get to say. Yeah. Uh, that was is... trending with memes yesterday, dude, so it's still relevant. <laughs> uh, okay. Stupid because it's man. just so Stupid. silly. But the uh, premise here is that it's not Baxter, in fact, from Anchorman, uh, uh, which is surprising. I really wish that it was Baxter yeah. carrying on his story. Wolf Ferrell plays this dog who's a bit of a fish out of water. Uh, he goes, takes to the street life because he's masters a, 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 a horrible a bee. Uh, Horrible word that I nearly just said. Whoops. <laughs> well, not say. Will Ferrell, however, is the. But you'll dog. think it. You'll think yes. it when you watch the film. Yeah. Who, who, who likes people who mistreat dogs anyway? You know the word. Uh, so he is. Uh, remember, it was the other guys with Mark Wahlberg. Ah. They're, they're, they're slow dancing with the nose. <laughs> not seen ballroom in your life. And uh, <laughs> takes the street life, meets dogs who are in fact. Ah. Prostitutes. This is how ridiculous this premise is. It is the people who made Cocaine Bear. Okay, yeah. Uh, and just... resolves to get revenge on his master, who he was so loyal to for all these years, by committing to biting off his wiener dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the whole premise: is that they they, they design on going back to the, this bad guy that Wolf Forte is, who is also one of the funniest people we have. Uh, and who knows? Dogs might be plotting this Jeez, I'm talking, everywhere I'm over so the world right to... now. Okay, this is a big one: <laughs> Killers of the Flower Moon. Martin Scorsese. For Why is this such three a benchmark? Three years, I've been staring at just this image. So lazily, they haven't even come up with a poster yet. This three years, maybe four years, I've been waiting for this movie. Leonardo DiCaprio taking on an interesting role, role here. Usually, he's a high-powered guy in movies. Yeah, Wolf, powerful, Street, uh, yeah. Aviator, etc. Yeah, he's a sort of a blue-collar dude who might just be a pawn in a larger game. Okay. A game being played by the likes of Robert De Niro. We see uh, also... Um, good grief, I interviewed him. How can I forget his name? Brendan Fraser, who plays yeah. the lawyer to Robert De Niro, uh, but directed John by Lithgow. Martin Scorsese. John Lithgow is a very good actor we should not take for granted. But the story revolves around the lady who is a relative newcomer. Uh, uh, Lily Gladstone is, or uh, Jesse Plemons. Uh, Jesse Plemons is uh, the, w the good guy who cottons onto this idea that white settler colonialists in the United States are taking over 
uh, the Osage land. Uh, Osage is a Native American tribe, and what this tribe finds under their land is oil. They have no interest in it. I mean, Native American people often refer to it as the black snake. It ruins our lives, all of us. Uh, but prospectors come onto the land, and this tribe starts to get rich because the government goes, look, we have to re uh, give these people reparations, what they yeah. deserve. Yeah. However, the white man comes along, which Martin Scorsese makes clear. It's great to see a movie not care to say it's white supremacy that did this. Everyone's playing gently, gently, dance yeah. around the flowers, but it's like, no, we have to talk about America's history. And so uh, in real life, uh, people would falsely marry Native American women and then kill them to take the claim. Take people would hand. murder oh, Native well, American yeah. people in alleys, as you saw all throughout the trailer. Horrible real-life story. Uh, and so Martin Scorsese, very sadly now, he's 80 years old, he says, it is only with this movie that he realized what cinema is capable of. Wow. Guys, this man at the, in the twilight of his career, in the, oh, his career is, he, he, can he direct another movie at 80? I hope so. I love him. You love him. We love him. But it's the scale of the movies that he makes that I think would always make it a daunting prospect. But to see Leo in his hands... You, you want to, to get onto another big one. Oh, buddy, I don't know if I'm ready to talk about this yet. Dune, and part two. And you destroy the furniture. So this is my the one that I'm looking forward to. Our camera people are throwing hands and toy-toying. Uh, it's gonna be a riot here if we show them the trailer. Everyone watch carefully. So everyone's lover boy, Timothy Chalamet, everyone's lover, girls and Dyer. And this is the second installment. Look, whatever, I'm not gonna give you the ins and outs. Look at this footage, guys. Oh. Denis Villeneuve, the director, who previously also gave you Sicario, previously also gave you Blade Runner 2049, a rival with Amy Adams, those last two movies which he referred to as practice for Dune. He referred to two beautiful movies as practice for Dune, and this is why. Denis Villeneuve is a director who, and I'll say something preposterous, is here to rescue the blockbuster from mediocrity. For sure. Uh, you're allowed to love Star Wars, and you're allowed to love Avengers and stuff like that. Totally have fun with it. And he has no bad bone in his body towards those movies, but he is such a masterclass of a director that he goes from making art films, if you want to call prisoners that, or enemy or whatever, that are masterful to going, you know what, I'm going to do pop movies as well. And oh. I'm gonna knock it out the park. There is nothing like Dune. I'm so, so excited for how it was insanely beautiful. There's the shot, man. Yo, come on. Uh, Look uh, at this poor so, man. Uh, I watched, so, 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 <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just had to drift there because even this morning when I watched this trailer again, I cried. You make him I'm not the only one because Ryle cried too when he watched Dune. <laughs> and he but said you... that to me in confidence. But I'm saying that because half of you also did it because it's that beautiful, guys. It, it represents the pinnacle of the industry that we all kind of aspire to be a part of. There's just something about the magic. And that we've been magic. deprived of. Yeah, man. And that film can be more. I, I don't believe in it as much as Denis Villeneuve. He really believes that film can change the world. And weirdly, he's changing my mind to believe that maybe cinema can have some sort of impact on all of us at some deep resonating level. If it's pop action, if it's art, don't make a difference, whatever. There's no, there's no in between even. That's like the most J.P. Sebastian thing you could have ever seen. November I 3rd. I love you for that. November 3rd is the most J.P. Sebastian day of the year. Ooh, okay, well, we're just going to have to sleep as much as we can until that amazing moment arrives. Some spectacular films to sink our teeth into for the second half of this year. J.P. Sebastian, thank you for taking us there, my friend. Ooh. You too.